Yes, it's still Plus Sports Special and Plus TV Africa. Now wrapping up with the world of boxing. Last week, we could not finish the discussion with superstar boxer Tony Sugar Salam. Now we have him back with us. Remember, he's a Nigerian boxer who has 14 wins and two losses. He has won accolades from around the world and, and he tends to win more. Good to have you with us, Tony. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good morning. Yeah, no, you know, Nigerians would love to know how your journey uh, began in the world of boxing. So I'd like you to um, tell us that story. That started from a very early stage of my, of my life. I mean, from my, from my childhood. and wasn't taking it seriously at first. was just doing it that I want to box. I want to learn boxing, you know, to protect yourself and to belong. You know how it is in the area I grew up at. You you want to have a say wherever you are. Then as I grew up and there are people that are doing, they're actually gaining attention for what they're doing. And a guy I was training, because I was training some guys then, getting some money on the sides. Mm. And he told me, yeah, I've been to Rope Park. That's where the Lagos State Boxing, uh, Lagos State Boxers, uh, Boxing Amateur trains. Mm. And I should go there. I was like, okay. Then I went there. And the first time I went there, uh, I had the sparring and the coach. I think it was the assistant coach then, Coach Baba Femi. And he took interest in me. And from there, he started. Mm. And here I am today. Yeah. And I remember there was a time you stopped boxing uh, for about eight years and uh, you eventually bounced back. Um, what made you quit the scene, uh, the boxing scene, when you returned? And the funny thing is you returned on three days' notice to defeat an opponent uh, who came from Germany right here in Nigeria. Wow. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a long story. We can't dip in too much into that. So um, yeah, you just I, give us a I, summary. Boxing, um, I had an unfortunate event that happens in my, in my life at the time and also my both hands and my knees uh, left me and I've got injury on that so I stopped boxing and two years ago um, I came to Nigeria and I trained I didn't train actually I went to a gym and I saw a boxer you know and I, the love is in me and I went there to do some sparring and I realized that, yeah, I could get back to this game. I trained for a few months. I didn't see anything productive coming from what I was doing. Then I left it again for another two to four months. Then I got a call three days before the fight to come and fight. But the money was too enticing then. So I took the fight on three days short notice. There was this most wanted rematch in Africa versus Sting Gonorenda of Zimbabwe for the WF Africa uh, Cruiserweight title. It was a controversial loss in Zimbabwe, but of course a masterclass performance in Lagos during the rematch to become champion. Tell us more about this. Ah, uh, that, 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 that was a good story, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mixed story, one sad one and the happy one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to Zimbabwe to, to fight um, Gonorenda. The guy is a strong fighter mm. and very strong and he's powerful. But you know, you know how I do. I know how to do the game. I, I'm very my adaptability in this game is is got no match. So when I started fighting him, I changed to what I believe can get me the W. And I did what I should do, and I believed and my team, including the crowd on the Zimbabwe, thinks I won the fight. Unfortunately, the judges saw different things and they awarded the fight to him and we protested and they come to me that you did want the fight, but there's nothing, we cannot do anything officially because you only won with two rounds, and which is, is our balance. And we had a rematch in, in Lagos and I promised him what I would do to him and I knocked him out. And that's, that's what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, of course. Uh, now, uh, there's this story going around about your beef with uh, another boxer, Duro Dollar. It feels like, it feels like this is, is, is about to cause World War III between, in, the, in the world of boxing. 
<laughs> this is funny. I don't even like to hear that name. Do I don't like to hear that name. And not because I I dislike him personally. No, really. Um, it's just the way his persona and the some some people around him, the way everyone are doing makes everything escalate to the point that it is now. Um, I think. If I'm going to tell you the genesis of the story, start while I was training in his camp, helping him to to go and have a fight overseas, and I didn't like how how I was treated. He knows I'm an international boxer for the level I I was, the way I was treated, I didn't like it, and I believe him and his team could have done more than what they did to me, did for me. So and. That, that's what led me to stop training that I'm not getting the, anything from, from boxing until I got the opportunity to fight um, the German. Then, it started off when I talked to a manager, right? I'm not unintelligent as he is. You know? I'm well known globally and I'm, I'm connected to a few people and his manager's number was given to me and I spoke to the manager and him and his team and his friends think this is something serious that because that's his manager i'm not allowed to talk to him that uh, um, there's some one stupid voodoo or something that if i come the manager will leave him so i said to him hey, listen bro i talk to the manager if he can help me out it's got nothing to do with you i mean there are managers that go 20 boxers in, in, in the same way. Mm. So it's got nothing to do with you. And from there, that's where the beef started. And recently, on my manager, my manager, my promoter, put something on, the, on, on social media about what kind of fight the fans would like to see in Nigeria. Mm. I mean, you have to realize that we have a lot of talent in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but we need a fighter People's hearts will be off to see that, well, who is going to win? No one would know who's going to win. Not a fight that you, you already know when you come to the fight that this guy is going to win the fight. We don't want that. We want a fight, 50 50 fight. So, Salah Gloss promotion, they put this on the online that, well, we would love to see good fights on, in Nigeria. Yeah. And for what he did was he, he made a comment about, yeah, I'm not a real cruiserweight. That was a lot heavyweight that all the guys are for are bombs and all that. And I found that offensive that how dare you telling me who are for are bombs? Who have you for? Every fight you've had, every every meaningful fight, that's 50-50 fight, you've lost all the all of them. Except one that you had a lucky win. And we all know what happened after the fight. You lost in the rematch. So I went to him and I said to him, listen, yeah, that's a bit rich for me. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Mm. Take a challenge, you and I. Like I said on the night that I beat Gunorenda, I was the WBF African champion. You won the WBF world champion. So I'm the next guy to fight you. And I called him out that night. Let's have a fight for the, for the fan, for everyone, you know, to see good fight. But he don't want it. I don't blame him. If I was him, I wouldn't want to fight to the Sugar Salam. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, the, the question is, who is the best cruiserweight in Nigeria? And the fans of both parties are actually at each other's neck asking the questions. Are, are we going to be expecting a fight soon? And bef be before you answer, I'll say a big shout out to um, Sally Fawaz of Sally Gloves Promotion. They've been doing a wonderful job for boxing in Nigeria. But are we expecting a fight between Tony Salam and Duro Dollar? Well, there's one thing, uh, there's one lingo in boxing, right? They call it price out. Mm. This guy is already pricing himself out wow. of any negotiation because he's asking for two, um, 20 million to fight me. Well, wh where is he going to get that? He's not going to get that. His last two fights, he didn't get that, right? If he really want to fight me, if I'm so much of a bad guy that he doesn't like as he claims that he, uh, he's, so, he's so good. He's in a different class to me. Why didn't he just fight me? 
I will fire him anywhere. He's a police officer. I will fire him in police college. In his backyard, I will fire him. I will fire him anywhere. Mm. I, do you know what? We, we, this is our livelihood. We box for a living. Mm. Obviously, we're meant to get paid. I, I really want to shut him up so bad that I will fire him for nothing. Mm. So whenever he's ready, I'm ready. I want to fire him. I, I don't want to fire him. I want to beat him. Because wow. I'm so sure, dead serious, that it's not even going to last four rounds. Mm. So I, I don't think he's going to fight me. I would love to find him. I will love to find him. I will love to destroy him. Wow. I really want to destroy him. Mm. You know, that's how much I dislike the guy. Wow. So we're looking forward to that one. I was just hoping that an announcement and an agreement will be made uh, sometime soon for us to enjoy the, one of the biggest fights in the world of boxing. But looking at some other boxers now, I, I know it, it, it hasn't been going, it, it hasn't been all rosy for boxing in the country. But what do you think should be done? for boxing to get more attention uh, in the country? Well, we have a lot of boxers in Nigeria. Mm. I mean, boxers with good potential, you know, Tyson Kills, Sulaiman Lagbade is one of them. And we have uh, Riluwa Lawal, and we have uh, Ridwan Oladosu, we have Babyface, we have a chef for Taiwo, you know, we have all these boxers, very excellent boxers. And, you know, Tayolo, yeah, I didn't forget about him. And to those that I didn't mention, I couldn't mention all of them. What we need is not just one man. We need the whole process and to be to be changed. First of all, we our fan, the boxing fan out there, we need to get to them. Accessibility. What accessibility are we talking about? Not everyone can come to stadium. Not everyone can come to Roe Park. We need you. We need TV coverage. Go TV are doing their own. We need TV coverage. If we get that, that's number one. And we need a lot of sponsors. You know, Coca-Cola. There were sponsors, sponsors back in the days. And then there's, there's not even, they don't have as much um, talent as we have today. We need sponsors. And um, before that, we need TVs to come into the game. And trust me, within within a couple of years, we will have one of our boxers or two of our boxers knocking at the, at the world title. Wow. Thank you very much, Tony Sugar Salam. And uh, as you go, what will be your word of advice to the young boxers out there? Well, my advice is, is just there's so much in the game. So what they need to do is, we have people that they are born boxers. What I mean by born boxers that they are very talented. They don't need to be told. Yeah, they need guidance that this is what you need to do. What they do while they're fighting is not what coaches teach them. You couldn't teach them that. They already know that. But with, with that, you cannot get anywhere without dedication, self-discipline, which is very important. You know, self-discipline and train, work hard, work hard. You know, it's not rosy. I, I train with barefoot. I train with no bandages, let alone gloves. And that's how I got, to, got myself to where I am today. You know, if not for the unfortunate event, I could have been somewhere higher than this. You know, some of the guys that I've beaten, Ovo McKenzie was on my record and I beat him. And he, he actually fought five, five, for the IBF, which is the second world-ranked uh, boxing organization mm. in the world. And he drew in Argentina. We all know what that means. It means he won. Can you see the level of courage? Mm. And I believe we have so many young stars that, that could go past where I've been, mm. you know, where, where, where I've got to. So all they need is dedication and prayer, you know? Dedication and everything, but prayer, prayer, it's all by the mercy of God and the grace of God. Mm. End of the day. Wow. Thank you, you very much. You can't do anything without God. Mm. Of course, we can't do anything without the almighty uh, one right there. But thank you very much once again, Tony Shrika Salam, for speaking with us. And uh, we wish you success in your endeavors. Uh, thanks for having me once again. Thank yeah. you. Please continue to stay safe out there.